In this lesson, we are going to talk about families of sets. A set of sets is often called a family of sets or simply a family. We will denote a family of sets by a script capital letter. So for example, we have this family of sets A and it contains the following four sets. For the family of sets B, it contains all open intervals of the form negative A to A where A is a positive number. Take note that it is always possible to identify each set in a non-empty family of sets with an index set. And if I is an index set for F, we can write F as follows. So here it contains all sets A sub I where I is an element of your index set. So for example, our family of set A earlier can be indexed by 1, 2, 3, 4 because we can take this to be our A sub 1, this is our A sub 2, this is our A sub 3, and A sub 4. So therefore, our index set is the set 1, 2, 3, 4. Next, our family of set B can be indexed by 0 to infinity. Why is that? We can set this interval negative AA as A sub small a, correct? Where A is a positive number. Suppose that our A sub 1 is this set, A sub 2 is this set, and A sub 3 is this set. The family script A is indexed by 1, 2, 3. Now, suppose that I write the set 1, 2, 4, 5 as A sub 10, this set as A sub 21, and this set as A sub pi. So therefore, we can now view this set as indexed by 10, 21, and pi. What does that mean? It only means that a family of sets can have different index sets. So our same family A is now indexed here by the set 1, 2, 3, and it can also be indexed by the set 10, 21, and pi. Suppose that our index set is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and let A sub i be this set. Take note that A sub 0 will be the same as A sub 4, A sub 1 will be the same as A sub 3, and A sub 2 will just be the set containing 8. Take note here that our index set i has 5 elements, but the indexed family, script A, has only three members. It's this set, this set, and this set. What does that mean? It means that the cardinalities of the index set and the family of set may be different. Here is another way of writing the union of sets. Let script F be a family of sets which are all subsets of a universal set U. The union over F is written as follows, the union of all A's such that A is an element of script F. It is the set of all X such that X is in A for some A in script F. And the intersection is also defined similarly, except that this time around, your X must be an element of A for all sets A in script F. So for example, what is the union over script A? So take note that this just means the union of all sets in the family of sets. And what is the union of all of these sets? It is just the set containing A, B, C, D. What would be the intersection? The intersection of all of these sets is the set containing A. What about this one? The family of sets is the set containing the open intervals negative a to a, what would be the union? The union would be the set of all real numbers and the intersection would be the set containing zero. Let us discuss this theorem on intersection and union. But first, let us recall that if we have a intersection b, the intersection will be a subset of one of the sets and also A will be a subset of A union B. This theorem is just the generalization of this one. Number one is saying that the intersection of all the sets will be a subset of 
any member of the family F. Take note here that B is just a set inside the family F. So that is a generalization of this one here. And number two is a generalization of this one. So this is saying that if you get any member of the set, it will always be a subset of the union. In this green part, we are only considering the family containing the sets A and B. Next, if the family of sets is non-empty, the intersection of all the sets will be a subset of the union of all the sets inside that family. Let us prove part one. Assume here that the family of sets is not empty. There will be a different proof if F is empty. We now let X be an element of the intersection. What does it mean for X to be an element of the intersection? If we go back to the definition, this is saying that X is an element of the intersection if and only if X is an element of A for all, this part here, for all A in script F. Similarly, you are an element of the union if and only if you belong in at least one of the sets here. So for some A in script F. Now, going back to our proof, so this means that X is an element of A for all A in F. However, your B here is an element of F. In the beginning of the proof, of course, we have let F be a family of sets and let B be any member of the family F. I just did not include that here. So since B is in F, then X must be an element of B. Just so that you can imagine, let's say this is our family of sets F. It contains sets. So let's say set 1, set 2, and so on. And B is inside this F. B is in here. But this is saying that X is an element of all the sets that can be found in F. So therefore, X must be in B. So that concludes this one. Next, we prove this one. Let X be an element of B. And we want to show that X is an element of the union. What does it mean for something to be in the union? You have to show that it belongs to a set in script family F. Since X is in B and B is a set inside your family F, then X must be an element of the union. Because again, what does it mean for something to be in the union? So let us just recall that you can say that X is an element of the union if and only if there exists an A in F such that X is an element of that set. So in this case, the set in F for which X belongs to is your set B. Take note that 1 and 2 is true even if the family of sets F is empty. I will not prove that. However, for number 3, take note that we need the assumption here that script F is non-empty for this to be true. Take note that this is just a generalization of A intersection B will be a subset of A union B. So the intersection of all the sets will be a subset of the union. However, again, the assumption here is that F is non-empty. If the family of sets is empty, is it true that the intersection of all the sets will still be a subset of the union? That is not true. We let F be the empty, take note that this is empty, the empty collection of subsets of the set of natural numbers. Let us compute the intersection of all the A's where A is in F. 
what will it be? What does it mean for x to be an element of the intersection? It only means that x is in A for all A in F. If we use symbols to write this, it means that for all A, if A is in F, then x is in A, correct? That is what it means for x to be in the intersection. And take note that x is inside what? Our universal set in consideration here is N, right? This is your universal set. However, in this implication, A is an element of F. This is false, correct? Because our F is empty. So, therefore, this implication here is vacuously true because the premise is always false. So, therefore, this is always true for any x. And hence, the intersection of all the sets would be the entire universal set, the set of natural numbers. Next, we want to find the union of all the a's, a element of f, where again, f is your empty set. I will just be using a series of symbols just to show you how to get this one. X is an element of the union. Again, by definition, it means that X is in A for sum. A in script F. Using symbols, this means that there exists an A in F such that X is in A. But in the first place, again, your F here is empty. This one cannot be satisfied. There is no A element in F. There is no A for which X is an element of A. It means that the union of A is now the empty set. So therefore, we have shown that the intersection which is the set of natural numbers, it is not a subset of the union because this is the empty set. Next, we have our generalized distributive loss. Let U be the universal set and let A be a subset of U. Recall that given a family of sets, we can always find an index set. So therefore, we can write it as B sub I, where I is an element of the index set I. And here, our assumption is that F is non-empty. So this is saying that we can still distribute it. A union, the intersection of all the elements in script F is just the same as the intersection of the union of the elements in script F. You get the union of it with A. Similarly, A intersection, the union, is the union of all the intersections. Similarly, we also have the generalized De Morgan's law. The complement of the union is the intersection of all the complements. And the complement of the intersection is just the union of all the complements. Let us prove this one. The complement of the intersection is the union of the complements. To show this, I will just be using symbols. I will no longer write it in sentences. I will leave it up to you to write it in sentences. So first, I will start with x being an element of this one. Intersection of a sub i, i element of i, and then complement. This means that x is not an element of the intersection. This statement is the negation of x being an element of the intersection. What does it mean for x to be in the intersection? It means that x is an element of a sub i for all i in i. However, we have negation here. So how do we negate this statement? 
there exist, correct? So this will be for some. I will not be using I, I will be using K. There exists a K in I such that X is not in. Now, what does it mean if X is not an element of A sub K? That's the same as X is an element of the complement of AK. Now, we have this one. X is an element of A sub K prime for some. That is for some, so that means X is an element of the union of all such A sub I's. I can go back to I here. And then I have a prime here. So we started from here. We can end up here. So that shows that these two sets are equal. For the last part of this lecture, we will be discussing pairwise disjoint sets. An indexed family is said to be pairwise disjoint if and only if for all gamma and delta in the index set, either A gamma is the same as A delta or their intersection is empty. So this is saying that if we get two elements in F, arbitrary two elements, you have an a set here, a set here. Remember that F is a family of sets. So the elements are just sets. When you get arbitrary two elements inside F, it's either they are equal or they are disjoint. So it's either like that, they are disjoint or they must be equal. So for example, our family B containing the sets B1 up to B6 is defined as follows. This family is pairwise disjoint because if you get, let's say, B1 intersection B3, they are disjoint. B3 intersection B5, they are disjoint and so on and so forth. And note that B1 is equal to B5. So if you get two arbitrary sets in script B, you will either get that they are disjoint or they are equal. Here's another example. Suppose that A sub X is the set containing negative X and X for every X in R. And our family D is the set of all A sub X where X is an element of the set of real numbers. So therefore our index set here is R. The family D is pairwise disjoint, correct? Because if you get two arbitrary elements here, you can have two cases. It's either if X is equal to Y, A sub X will be the same as A sub Y. If X is not the same as Y, what can you say about A sub X and A sub Y? They will be disjoint.